Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jim. I'm the drywall guy of the DIY, but you should already know that because that's the name of my channel. Today, I got a wild one for you. I got a call from my builder who was tearing down a divider wall that was built with two closets. As soon as I walked in, guess what I saw? This monstrosity. It was a cold air return. It was about as appealing as a wet, soggy sandwich left out in the rain. Believe it or not, the builder wanted to leave it the way it was, and I just couldn't live with that. I mean, look at this thing. It looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa without the charm. Check this out. There's not a right angle anywhere. So this thing couldn't catch a right angle if you threw it at it. Look, come over here. Look at this. Look how bad and out of whack this thing really is. Now to begin my quest, how to straighten it up. The first thing I need to do is take off that temporary trim. And then taking some measurements because the most important thing I needed to do was make a level line foundation. Maybe you might have something ugly that you want to cover up. Well, hang in there because maybe this video might inspire you to cover up some of your ugly challenges. After the level line, the real challenge began. Hey guys, you're getting something special today. A 360 view of the project. It's like a drone flying around or something, right? As you can see, I'm leaving a half inch gap on both sides of the box. Next, I had to cut two blocks. It would be really awesome if you've had an experience like this covering up something ugly and you wound up doing it a different way. I would love to know how you beat the ugly. I've came across many of these situations. In the 30 something years of drywall, each one has brought its own challenge. Now that my two blocks are on, I can put my level line board on, still keeping a half inch off on each side of the box. I thought the hard part was over, but the box still had some fight left in it. It's because it was just me and the box. This job reminds me back in the day when I landed a gig on a Florida Navy base, working on the enlisted men's building. Oh, what, what happened? Sleeper. We were tasked with updating the heating and cooling system, which sounded straightforward enough, but here's the kicker. They needed to chase a whole vertical tunnel running from the bottom floor all the way to the top, three stories tall. Now, things get weird. The framing for this chase was crazy. We weren't dealing with the usual half inch drywall, no sir. This beast needed one inch thick slabs. Forget razor blades, those things wouldn't even scratch it. We had to break out the jigsaws. It was the only thing that would cut the rock. After some minor setbacks and some camera trickery, the framework was finally done. Now comes the part where I make this ugly box disappear. Let's dive back into the Navy base challenge. Each panel was a monster. Eight foot tall, two feet wide, and a solid inch thick. Just imagine wrangling these things into place, floor by floor. And guess what? On this particular crew, yours truly was the only drywaller. Talk about baptism by fire, huh? We were on a super tight deadline too. By the time I finished hanging that monster chase, my boss walks up and drops a bomb. Gotta have it finished and painted in one day. Now any drywaller will tell you that's practically impossible. Something cool happened after the sheetrock was hung. I was very excited about my granddaughter coming to the job the next day. She's my angel. Now back to the story. My boss was not one to back down. We decided to go for it. Slapping on hot mud, scraping the lap marks and painting it as fast as we could. Got done late in the night. Feeling pretty darn proud of ourselves. We strolled back the next day for a victory inspection, except victory quickly turned into defeat. The paint was peeling off like a sunburn. Turns out rushing that mud job meant it was still wet under all that paint. So there we were, back to square one. Scraping, patching, sanding, repainting. What should have been a one day wonder turned into being a three day marathon with a whole lot of material thrown in for good measure. Lesson learned, don't mess with mother nature, especially when it comes to drying time. No matter the time it takes, do it right the first time and you'll always be the victor. Enough about me, how about you? I would love to hear about some of your project battles. Even in the mudding, this box was a challenge. 
because a box like this, the way the corner bead is, it makes it very difficult to mud all the corner bead at one shot. But as you can see, that I have to keep wiping and wiping until it's completely smooth. Now that we've got the bed coat done and we are skimming it, we're about to get this thing wrapped up. Finally done with the magic show. I made that ugly metal box disappear. If you want to see it painted and done, here you go. I would just like to say thanks to my special guest, Penny. Oh yeah, thank you so much for that beautiful little note. I hope to see you again on a drywall guy of the DIY.